This is George from iTech Legion. Obviously, it's the large enthusiast coolers that always get the bulk of the attention. The big dual tower coolers, the AIOs, uh, and CLCs. But really, the largest part of the market that uh, is out there is going to be the mainstream and budget coolers. It's going to fit the majority of consumers' needs. Now, typically, we've seen um, quite a few you know, budget and mainstream coolers out there. Some have made a real lot of noise, like the Cooler Master 212 Evo. But typically, we don't see the major manufacturers really getting into this market. And when I say major manufacturers, I'm talking about the real top-tier cooling manufacturers, such as Noctua, Fantex, Be Quiet, Cryorig. But now, with the demand for it, and with CPUs coming down in TDP, making it more and more possible, we're actually seeing these guys getting into it. So, we're going to take a look at some pieces from Be Quiet, Fantex, and Cryorig that are aimed at just that. They're smaller, quieter, and they are budget friendly. Prior Rig first appeared on the scene about a year ago. Um, with their top flight R1 being released first, and then working their way down the line. We took a look at the H5 Universal just a couple weeks ago, and really it was a phenomenal unit just uh, really belying its $50 price point. And now we're getting a look at the even smaller H7, which is their first foray into um, a mainstream budget type cooler. And once again, you know, we see that it's really uh, belying, you know, once again, you know, it's price point. It's really a great looking cooler. Not something you'd guess is a $34.95 retail cooler looking at the craftsmanship and the design that's gone into it. But let's get a look at it here. First, take a look at the box. Uh, obviously, same cryo rig box we're used to seeing with picture of the H7 on the front and moving around the side. Again, we see extreme efficiency, fine tuning, uh, fine tuning cooling cap uh, capacity, zero interference uh, for infinite RAM compatibility. Now, obviously that's a big deal if you're using RAM that has large heat sinks. The H7 is not going to interfere with your RAM slots in any way, shape, or form. Installation made easy. Uh, get started within four minutes. Now, uh, the H7 doesn't use the incredible multi-seg that we've seen uh, on all of the prior cryo rig uh, units, but again, it uses a very, very secure, very simple to use installation kit. Move around the back, take a look at a couple, uh, a couple of the more important specs real quick. The heat sink specs. Uh, 711 grams with the fan included, so not a very heavy cooler whatsoever. Uh, height on it is 145 millimeters, so you're going to have plenty of clearance in most mid-tower and full-tower cases without a problem, and it's going to fit in some smaller cases as well. Now, this is the first we've seen of a 120 millimeter fan from Cryorig. It's an included QF120 fan. Obviously, 25.4 millimeters thick, so it's a tiny bit thicker than a uh, standard fan. 1600 RPM. Um, capable of 49 CFM at only 25 dB. Now, let's take a look at the H7 itself. The uh, H7 uses uh, basically an identical feature set as we saw in the H5. So you're really not giving up a lot. It's really a little bit smaller, a little bit quieter, but you're not giving up anything in the way of design. First off, on the top, got a black plastic plate with the Cryorig logo uh, with the three six millimeter heat pipes capped. So you get a nice clean look up top. Hole going through is actually um, for access to the screw on the installation kit. But now looking at the tower itself, we see the familiar jagged Cryorig design in the back, which reduces turbulence as well as uh, opens up airflow a little bit. And we see the high fin structure in the front. So you get the high fin structure and the jet flow, uh, jet fin acceleration, I should say, that we've seen in past Cryorig coolers. What this actually does, the high fin design reduces turbulence and also opens up a larger intake area so you can get more into um, the actual fin array itself. Now, as it goes through, you see that you've got a second set of fins, which are not high finned, which are closer together. This forces that air to be moved more quickly through the uh, fin array itself, making for better cooling. So you do get better heat dissipation. And as we said, you've got three six millimeter heat pipes, all nickel plated, as you see, copper heat pipes, obviously. C1100 copper base, milled to a nice polish. Uh, not a mirror type finish, but very, very nicely milled. And on top, your mounting kit um, 
retention bracket actually does come already on there and it is um, an AMD and Intel retention bracket as you can see it actually can move and go to fit whichever platform you're going to be using. Uh, it's compatible with Intel 775, 1155, 1156, 1150 obviously, uh, 1366 and 2011 as well as AM2, AM3, FM1, FM2. So you get full compatibility and a really nice feature set. Uh, like I say, you're basically getting a smaller H5 here, exact same feature set um, using the Hive design as well as the Jetfin acceleration. So really, really nice looking piece from CryoRig. While well, the multi-sec mounting kit isn't included, the uh, install kit of the H7 is actually a really nice kit. Now, taking a look, first start install manual, as you see, really nicely illustrated, easy to follow along with, and honestly, the installation is so simple and intuitive that you'll need nothing more than the pictures just to follow along. The entire install kit itself is comprised of a backplate that works for both AMD and Intel, four standoffs, four screws. Uh, included is a small tube of CP9 cryo-rig thermal interface material, second set of fan clips, should you want to run push-pull, it's completely capable, and taking a look at the bottom of the um, H7 itself, you get a look at the mounting kit which can flex to position itself for AMD or for Intel and lock into place right there. Now, one of the nice things about that being, when you're in the AMD position, as you see, it's gonna to run top to bottom and is going to be um, mounted so that your fan is oriented front to back. So you're gonna get a nice looking install on AMD as well as Intel. The H7 doesn't use the multi-seg mounting kit, as we said, but uh, the mounting kit is very, very simple. First step, back plate. You've got four bolts that go through. Once again, you've got the three Intel cutaways and just select the proper one. 775 on the inside, 1150 series, and 1366 on the outside and drop them right through. Uh, you'll see it says Intel side on the back plate, so you'll want that facing you when you put through. If you're going to be doing AMD, just turn it around and the AMD side will be facing you and it'll drop through that way. So we're just going to put these into place and put the back plate In place and as you can see four bolts will come through you've got four spacers that'll go on there now when you put the spacer on it will actually snap into place and it's going to hold those bolts And take the cooler, and as we saw, this is floating, it'll go into AMD position, or just spread it out into Intel position, it'll lock into place. Move the cooler into place. actually needs to open up a little bit. There we go. And from the back, you'll screw in to the cooler mount. Now obviously I put the thermal interface material on the CPU before doing this. And get the second one started. Once you've got a couple started, uh, you know, with the thumb screw back there, it's really easy to do by hand. Get it started and you can then tighten up with a screwdriver. It's important to note when you're doing the final tightening, of course, move in an X pattern, uh, meaning tighten one screw a little bit at a time here, there, 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 and continue in that way. Uh, so you don't put too much stress on one side of the motherboard. Uh, obviously, very, very easy install. Also, 
Um, I should also mention the screws do have stops. So when you feel the screw come to an abrupt stop, that's not an indication to turn the screw harder. That's an indication to stop turning. You don't want to snap the head off the screw or snap the screw itself. So, or of course, you know, strip the uh, mounting kit. So when you feel the stop, just stop turning. Now, uh, obviously installed in the case, the CryoRig H7 Universal, like all CryoRig Universals, have complete RAM compatibility. Don't block the RAM slots whatsoever. Very, very nice looking in the case. Easy install. Uh, definitely like the black top with the CryoRig logo. Really good looking cooler uh, at this price point. Getting a look at the performance of the CryoRig H7. Uh, starting off with the stock CPU clock, the H7 slots in pretty much where we would expect it to, a couple of degrees behind the Fantex DX12, uh, but actually quite a bit quieter than the DX12, uh, the DX12 being a dual fan. Uh, a little bit louder than the Shadow Rock Slim, but the Shadow Rock Slim is also quite a bit larger and more expensive. Um, and just a couple degrees behind that. Matching up head to head with the Be Quiet Pure Rock, which is actually the best cooler we've tested in this price range. Now, turning up the heat a little bit, uh, we're gonna overclock the CPU to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.21 volts, and we see the H7 doing really, really well here. Still just four degrees behind the DX12, um, staying, like I say, quite a bit quieter. Uh, a few degrees behind the Shadow Rock Slim and keeping up with the Be Quiet Pure Rock. So all in all, the H7 is turning in the best numbers we've seen in this price category, uh, keeping up with, you know, the Be Quiet Pure Rock, which, uh, like I say, previously had turned in the best numbers we'd ever seen, and the H7 is matching it head-to-head. Uh, -head. So for the second time in the last week, you know, we're seeing a $35 cooler uh, ready to take down the Cooler Master 212 Evo in terms of performance with lower noise. The Cryo Rig H7 really uh, just offered top of the top of the line performance in its class, you're not going to find a $35 cooler with better performance than the CryoRig H7. It also was quieter than the Cooler Master 212 Evo. But now one thing I will say, uh, the CryoRig 120mm fan, while it is quieter than most of the um, fans in its price class, it also has a little bit different tonality to it. When it gets above 1200 RPM, it is a bit more noticeable than a lot of other fans we've seen. Even, you know, the 12DX, which we compared it to, which is a dual fan and is significantly louder. The uh, Cryo Rig H7, the tonality of the fan was more noticeable outside in the case than the 12DX was. And that is the one weakness that the H7 does have. Otherwise, top to bottom, it's a phenomenal cooler. We're gonna give it a High Tech Legion Gold uh, Award. And, you know, like I say, Easy to give to, uh, easy to give it to it, just because you know it's going to give you top of the line performance in its price class. It's really, really beautifully put together. Uh, CryoRig puts together a very, very finished product, and the H7 is absolutely no exception. Uh, installation was an absolute breeze. So top to bottom, you're getting a really, really beautiful piece with the H7, and also you're getting complete RAM compatibility, which again you don't get from a lot of coolers in this price class that are able to keep up with this in terms of performance. So once again. Uh, gold Award for the Cryo Rig H7.